Welcome to the day one video, which is section three. So in day zero, we did order of operations and using a formula. Today, we're going to translate verbal expressions into algebraic expressions and vice versa. And we're also going to use equa solve equations using properties of equality. So you've already done both of these before. So again, this is a review of something that you've learned freshman year and that you probably did in uh, geometry as well. Again, today's video is primarily no calculator. I do believe there's one problem at the end where you're going to use a calculator though. So example one is where we're going to write an algebraic expression to represent each verbal expression. So we're going from verbal to algebraic. So A, the difference of negative 4 and 12. Well, first thing is we should know that difference means subtract. So I'm going to start with subtract. So the difference of negative 4 and 12. So I'm going to have negative 4 subtract 12. That's it. That's your answer. All it says is write an algebraic expression. It doesn't say solve. So just leave your answer like that. Okay. B, the product. So product we should know means multiply the product of 6 and 14. So that's your answer to B. Again, don't solve it or simplify it at all. Just leave it like that. And then C, this is where it gets more difficult. Two more than the product of 4 and the cube of a number. Okay, so two more. So more means add. So I'm going to have two more. So I'm going to be adding 2 to something of the product, so I'm going to be multiplying, the product of 4, so 4 multiplied by the cube of a number. We don't know what that number is, so we're going to call it x, but then it says the cube of the number, so that's x cubed. So really this is going to be 2 add 4x cubed. Okay, so that was example one. Example two, we're going to go backwards. So we're given an algebraic expression, and now we have to write the verbal expression. So starting on A, on the left side, I have multiplication. So that's going to be product. So I'm going to say the product of six and a number. So that just means 6 multiplied by x. x is the number. Okay, then I have this equal sign. So how do I denote equal sign in a verbal expression? I'm going to use the term is. Is. So the product of 6 and a number is 72. So that's A. Okay, let's try B together, and then you're going to do C. So I start with 2C. So I could say the product of 2 and a number, or I could say twice a number. So I'm going to start with twice a number. So twice a number. Again, I have that equal sign. So is twice a number is, so is equal to, is the sum of another number and 5. So you're probably asking, what does that another number mean? That another number means that this number and this number are two different numbers. Now, how do I know that they're different? Well, they have different variables. So somehow I need to denote in my verbal expression that they are different numbers, different variables. So that's why I said another number, or we could have said a second number. But that was B. You try C now. So pause the video and try that one on your own, please. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. Now the left side of the equation should have been easy. It's, it was the same as in B. So twice a number. And then our equal sign is, so twice a number is. You also could have started the product of two and a number. 
So is, okay, I have c squared. Now here's what's different than the previous one, is these two are the same. Okay, so looking back at b, we said twice a number is the sum. So in this case, instead of sum, it's going to be the difference, because we're subtracting, is the difference of, okay, we have that c squared. So is the difference of that same number squared. So I'm going to say that number squared, or you might have said that same number squared, and 4. So twice a number is the difference of that number squared and 4. So somehow you had to denote that that was the same number, that I'm using the same variable on the left side and the right side, as compared to B, part B, where we were using two different variables. So that one was very tricky. If you got that one wrong, I completely understand. Not a big deal. We're going to be doing some more practice with this in class. So that was the translating objective. Now we're going to move on and we're going to solve equations. So again, this is something that you've done before. Okay, so example three says solve each equation, and there's parts A through D. We're going to start with A. So we have negative 5x equals 20. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get rid of that negative 5 eighths. We want just x. So the negative 5 eighths and the x are being multiplied. The inverse of multiplying is dividing. So I'm going to divide by negative 5 over 8. Okay, here's where we run into a problem. We don't have a calculator. And I don't know about you, I can't do 20 divided by negative 5 eighths in my head. So, on the left side, the negative 5 eighths and the negative 5 eighths cancel. I get x equals 20 divided by negative 5 over 8. Okay, now it's helpful here to remember that dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So really, this is 20 times the reciprocal, 8 over negative 5. Okay, this looks a little bit better. If I try and change that 20 to be 20 over 1, I now multiply the numerator and multiply the denominator. 20 multiplied by 8 is going to be 160. 1 and negative 5 is going to be negative 5. So I get x equals 160 divided by negative 5. Okay, well I have to think. 160 divided by 10 is going to be 16. So 160 divided by negative 5 is going to be twice that. Because I'm dividing by a smaller number. So 160 divided by negative 5 is going to give me negative 32. So you have to remember, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, so looking at B, this is one that you're going to do on your own. Don't move on to D yet. Right now, pause the video and complete example B. When you come back, we'll go over it together. Okay, so you should have had time to try this one on your own. So the first thing that you should have done is distributed on the left side. So you should have distributed that 5 and then distributed the 2. When you do that, you get 5x, add 15, add 2, subtract 2x equals 14. You then should have combined like terms on the left side. And you should have been able to solve from there. You should have gotten x equals negative 1. If you didn't get x equals negative 1, it means you made a mistake. If you made a mistake, go back and fix this problem before we move on. If you got it right, good job, we're going to move on to C. Okay, so here's C. It says 1 over x, add 2 thirds, equals 3 over 15. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to get that x alone. So I'm going to notice it's in a fraction, and I'm adding 2 thirds. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to subtract the two-thirds. So I get 1 over x equals 3 over 15, subtract two-thirds. Okay, now, do we remember how to subtract or add fractions? 
Hopefully you remember that you don't just add and subtract the numerators, but that you have to have a common denominator. So I need to find a common denominator between this 3 over 15 and the 2 thirds. So common denominator between 15 and 3 is going to be 15. So 3 over 15 can stay 3 over 15. But that 2 thirds I need to get in terms of 15. So if I have to multiply the 3 by a 5, then I have to multiply the numerator by a 5 as well. Okay, so 2 multiplied by 5 is going to give me 10. 3 multiplied by 5 is going to give me 15. Okay, this was helpful because now we have the same denominator. Okay, so on the left side, my 1 over x is going to stay 1 over x. On the right side, 15 stays in the denominator, and I subtract the numerators. So I have 3 subtract 10, which would give me negative 7. So I have 1 over x equals negative 7 over 15. Now I want x, not 1 over x. So what I have to do now is use the cross product property. Or some of you probably call this cross multiply. So 1 multiplied by 15 is going to give me 15. Negative 7 multiplied by x is going to give me negative 7x. I then divide both sides by negative 7, and I get x equals 15 over negative 7. Okay, now you have one to do. Okay, this one's tricky. So you have to think, how would I do this problem? I'm going to give you a little tip. A similar problem would be 2x minus 4 equals 7x. What's the first thing that you would do? Well, you would want to get those x's alone. So the first thing that you would probably do is you would subtract 2x. So you would have negative 4 equals 5x. So you now would have all those x's alone. Okay, well this problem, you're going to have to do the same thing. You have an x on the left side, you have an x on the right side. So the first thing you have to do is move that x on the left side over to the right side. And this is where I'm going to leave you. Pause the video and complete this problem. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. Now, I gave you a hint and I told you the first thing that you should have done is move the x from the left side to the right side. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to subtract the 1 half x. So on the left side, I'm left with negative 3 over 4. On the right side, I have 3 fifths x subtract 1 half x. Okay, now as before, we need to find a common denominator on the, left, on the right side, I mean, between the 3 fifths and the 1 half. Well, the common denominator between 5 and 2 is going to be 10. So I need both of these fractions to be in terms of 10. Okay, so to get from 5 to 10, I have to multiply by 2. So this becomes 6 over 10x. To get from 2 to 10, I have to multiply by 5. So 1 times 5 will give me 5x. So I have negative 3 over 4 equals 6 over 10x, subtract 5 over 10x. Okay, so on that right side, when I'm subtracting my fractions, 10 stays, and I subtract the numerators. So 6 subtract 5 is going to leave me 1 over 10x equals negative 3 over 4. So hopefully you got to this point. If not, that's okay. Um, if you need a fraction review, please make sure you ask your teacher in class. Now, I need to get rid of this 1 over 10, so I'm going to divide by 1 tenth. So on the right side, I'm left with x equals. On the left side, remember we talked about dividing by fractions is kind of difficult. So instead, you want to multiply by the reciprocal. So dividing by 1 tenth is the same thing as multiplying by 10 over 1, the reciprocal. So multiplying across. Negative 3 times 10 is going to be negative 30. 4 times 1 is going to be 4. So I get x equals negative 30 over 4. Last thing I need to do is simplify that. Both are divisible by 2. So if I divide negative 30 by 2, I get negative 15. If I divide 4 by 2, I get 2.
So I get x equals negative 15 over 2. Now, if you didn't get that, that's okay. This is by far the most difficult one we've done. Um, but hopefully you now see how to approach the fractions. Now, we are not finished yet. We have a few more examples to do on the next page. So flip the page, please. Okay, so we have two more examples to do, and they both involve word problems. Okay, so word problems generally intimidate most students, but they don't need to. Um, so right now, I want us to outline some steps on how to approach a word problem. So the first step in any word problem is just to read the problem. But after you read the problem, you need to define your variable. Then you need to set up an equation. After that, you're going to solve your equation. And then perhaps the most important step that most people forget is to actually answer the question. Okay, so I'm going to do one with you, and then you're going to do example five on your own. So example four, it says, I have 44 meters of fencing with which to encircle my yard. If the width of my yard is six meters longer than the length, how wide is the yard? Okay, so the yard is going to be a rectangle, so I'm going to start by drawing myself a picture. A lot of times in these problems, it's going to be, it's going to be helpful to draw a picture. So we're going to have the width, and we're going to have the length. Okay, so it says the width is six meters longer than the length. So that's going to help me right there. The width is going to be the length plus six. So my variable in this case is going to be L. L is going to stand for the length. Okay, so I marked L on my figure. L is going to be this side. L is going to be this side. Now, my width, then, is going to be the length plus 6. So instead of using a W, I'm going to mark L plus 6 for the width. So the width is just the length, but then 6 longer. Okay, so that's step 1. I define my variable. So I define my L equals length. Now it says I have 44 meters of fencing. Okay, so you probably have not fenced in your own yard, but you've seen a fence. A fence is just the perimeter. It's the outside. So 44 is going to be all my sides added together because I want the, the fence to completely encircle the yard. So that's going to be the L, add L, and then add my two widths. But instead of W, I'm going to use L plus 6 and L plus 6. Okay, so combining like terms, I have L, 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 L. So I have 4L plus 12 equals 44. So 44 equals 4L plus 12. I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides, so I get 36 equals 4L. If I divide by 4, I get L equals 9. Okay, so the length is 9. So I've solved. Last thing I need to do is answer the question. Well, the question says, how wide is the yard? Well, I know from previously that the width is the length plus 6. So the width is going to be 9 add 6. So I'm going to say the yard is 15 feet wide. And you've definitely done a problem like this in geometry before, at least probably 10 of them. So you should have seen that before. Okay, last problem of this video. This one does involve a calculator. So you're going to need to get out a calculator if you don't have one out already. It says the equation used to model the population of Mount Prospect in thousands since 2000 is y equals 45 plus one third x where x is the number of years since 2000. Use the equation to predict the population of Mount Prospect in 2015. So this is one that I'm going to leave you to do. Please make sure that you show your work. When you come to class tomorrow, your teacher will be going over it with you. Good luck.